How long will it last? It doesn't matter. It looks good now, and when it's in disarray, I'll do it again. You're so old? Oh, what, what did you do this weekend? D rank six times in Valorant? Shame. You can't, uh, there's no comeback. I see your comeback. It's been flooded away by a wave of Keck W's and a few Keck L's from people who don't realize I have not activated that one yet, but I should. Hello, Chibli, by the way. A, a stream that only has Keck W is like someone that only replies to your jokes with the same uh, fake laugh over and over, you know? We need to have a haha, -ha, a lull, and a, a couple of different emotes, a lamau with a varied number of, of O's at the end of it. Otherwise, it doesn't feel genuine. I'm not taking that. What about okay, okay? That's only something Justin can say when your joke in joke mode doesn't get any reaction after like 10 minutes. Then Justin goes... Okay, okay. And it's like the kiss of death. He knows it too. It's not his fault. But as, as soon as you hear nothing but the okay, okay, you know you're about to get absolutely shit on. How do you laugh? Number one for me is... Uh, four letter Lamau all caps. L-M-A-O all caps. Very funny is um, all lowercase Lamau with a trail of O's at the end. LOL, all caps might be next. And then LOL, all lowercase is basically just a read receipt. That's like, I see what you were trying to do there. And I appreciate it. I mean no ill will, but it just didn't get the job done for me. And then we get into the, the ha-has. Um, Ha-ha, all lowercase, four letters total, is almost like a lowercase LOL for me. But sometimes someone will tell two mid-jokes in a row, so you got to mix it up. So they don't catch on to the fact that they're not killing it. <laughs> And then multiple has, like like three plus has. At that point, I mean, this this like better than mid, but worse than based. Like Bilbo said at his birthday party. What about key smashes? I'm 35 years old. I don't do that. You can do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying I don't do that. What about LMFAO? That's like, it's just a regional dialect. I would count it the same as, a, as an LMAO in my world. Tomato, tomato. Get away from me, bro. Get away from me. Raffling in the modern day. You don't raffle too much these days. I hate the lull emo. It's funny. It's, it's what, what's wrong with you? It's a funny, it's a funny emote. It's a perfectly cromulent emote. It's a tribute. I'm not going to ban him. It's an opportunity to educate. He, he will not divide us, okay? I resisted Keck W for a long time, too. Back when I took myself more seriously. Times have changed. Hang on. Chibli said something about a denim jacket. <laughs> it got swept away by the emotes. 
All I saw was denim jacket. <laughs> I can't construct the rest. I, it would be naive of me to assume that I could uh, create the rest of a Chibli sentence at runtime. Missed it again. Come on, Chibli. Come on. Well, we, we're waiting. He will not divide us, made me buy a denim jacket. He will not divide us, made me buy a denim jacket. Okay, Dr. Seuss. He just took a shit in the Dr. Seuss toilet and it's giving mother. He will not divide us, made me buy a denim jacket. Okay, fucking when Tweedle Beetle's battle in a... Battle in a bottle, and the bottle's on a poodle, and the poodle's eating noodles. We call it a Tweedle Beetle Paddle Buttle Pottle Battle. Fucking, I don't know. He will not divide us. <laughs> He's got rhymes? Bro, this Dr. Seuss! Dr. Seuss kind of the original that's an awfully hot coffee pot. There we It's been 84 years. Thank you for this. I appreciate that. Thank you. He took a shit in the mother toilet and didn't flush. Don't hit me with question marks. You know what it is. Oh, you've never heard an old guy pretend to be young before? You've never heard your dad say for shizzle? The t <laughs> I did see the tweet where Vivek Ramaswamy is giving his wife a tribute. He calls her a throat surgeon, which she like literally is. But if you've been online too much, you can't read that as like her actually being a doctor. Like it's like <laughs> it sounds like like a rap music term. It's so good. The throat doctor or throat surgeon. It's even better. No offense to the doctors out there. <laughs> Oh, dude. That's re if you can't laugh at that on either side of the aisle, you got to step back and, and remember what it means to be human, okay? Yeah, I saw the New Jersey Devils fan get a finger in his butt during the National Anthem. And then I saw the whole team get a finger in their butt when they played the Canucks. You see the Bass Pro Shops thing? Yep, yeah, I saw the dude get in the Bass Pro Shops thing. Again, it's uh, another example of small dick uh, bias, by the way. So the dude who got into the Bass Pro Shops uh, pool naked, was it a grower, to put it politely? And everybody thinks it's okay to make fun of him because his penis is small. Oh, so it would be okay to take a, a skinny dip in the Bass Pro Shops water tank if you had a huge fucking hammer on you that's not fair that's not how we're supposed to treat people in society we're not supposed to divide people based on the color of their skin or their language or their religion or the size of the wedding tackle they got between their legs The small dicked need an absolutely comically enormously dicked ally like me to say it. Because a lot of big dick dudes like me, and I hear them talk all the time because we run in the same circles, they'll say things like, look at that dude's small penis. And I have to be the one with courage to say, hey, 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 just because we're hanging dong and making everybody else jealous at the YMCA, that doesn't mean that he didn't choose it. He will not divide us. I need the map. Oh, I have brimstone. That's right. What the hell? <laughs> I got the damn doohickey? Hmm. 
That's on the table, boys. Did you see the Pop Tart? Yeah, but what about Jordan Peele and Keegan Michael Key? Help. Anyway, I don't have anything else to say on the matter. YouTube viewers are going to be so confused. Bro, you're confused. <laughs> Leave YouTube out of it for now. What do you mean they're going to be confused? I'm high and I feel like I'm dipping in and out of the conversation. That's your fault, just for the record. I can follow everything that I'm saying. And you might say, that's not true. Well, then how the hell am I making callbacks to shit that we were talking about like two hours and 15 minutes ago? It's because I got the damn Chad GPT-4 running up here constantly, you know, every, you know how much mental processing power it takes? Every sentence you say, retroactively seeing if you can apply that to any of the eight jokes so far this stream that were actually funny to get a second laugh, to use every part of the buffalo. That's hard, man. I wish it wasn't doing, I wish it devoted the energy to something a little bit more productive. But it, it's just what it is. I don't know what to tell you. With all due respect, you got no idea what it's like to be number one. Every fucking thing you do affects every facet of every other fucking thing. Why not let the AI take over? They're not ready yet, okay? That's the thing. It's like AI is it's the smartest thing we got, and yet it still has not produced one organic laugh in the industry's entire history. soon i don't know i think it just goes to show you that the only definitive proof of the soul is that only people can tell funny jokes there's something something spiritual about comedy that's why i feel like comedians in many ways are kind of like the modern day philosophers the mystics who look to the stars and derive truth from only illusion. One of the most unfairly persecuted classes of profession on the planet in history, without a doubt. Oh brother, this guy stinks. <laughs> Okay, I will say, and this is me being honest. Someone said, what about the bottomless pit copy pasta? That is funny. If that was actually made by uh, AI, they, they nailed that one. The one that, you know, get to work, it's bottomless. That one is good. But I still feel like that one might have just been constructed by a particularly smart individual. And then they pretended it was AI to get some more, some eyes on it. But I'm not like that, dis well, I guess I am kind of cynical about AI. But I'm not cynical about AI in the same way that like, you know, I don't, I don't think that they're gonna be putting the chat GPT-9 into the Boston Dynamics robots and, um, you know, sicken them on us. I think it'll be much more uh, insidious and it will be the same way like every technological revolution eventually gets disseminated and corrupted. It'll be to get you to buy like, you know, like three more things every time you walk into the grocery store 
for more money than you thought you were going to spend. <laughs> it's probably not going to be like, you know, robot sharpshooters or something like that. It's probably going to be like Loblaws using their AI model. So they, they already have those smart price tags. They're going to like scan your phone when you walk into the store to get all of your meta, metadata, savings, consumption habits, salary, stuff like that. And then as you walk down the aisle, it will detect your position in the grocery store and it will change the prices on the price tag uh, based on your disposable income. So, you know, when, when a wealthier person walks down the aisle, the $2.49 potato chips are going to be $7.99 and they're going to be none the wiser. And we'll call it innovation. It's based? It's not based. Because the money from the wealthy people is just going to a richer motherfucker. <laughs> It's not going to the government, dummy. It's going to Galen Weston. The EU will call it illegal. I know, and then like some dude who, you know, is 22 years old and as a startup building email 3.0 in San Francisco will be like, this is why Europe is always behind. The government won't let the people have nice things like Dynamically increasing prices based on the demographic of the person who walked into the grocery store. It is, so it, it, it's still dystopian. It's just less openly dystopian, like a robot's going to shoot you in the head. And more like, you know, they'll probably just squeeze you a little bit more every time you go anywhere. Maybe that's worse. I don't know. I, I think it's probably better, but it, it would make a much worse movie. <laughs> no, that's okay. We don't need that. Yeah, that, then you could start a business sending low-income people to buy the food in the grocery store for lower prices. But then here's the thing. Probably within two years of inventing the business, your ass is going to need your own services. You ever see that uh, Black Mirror episode, 10 Million Merits? No, it's one of the good ones. Can you explain escrow to me? Yeah, of course. Escrow is like... Um, sometimes the terms of a contract will have something that triggers uh, if a condition is met. Oftentimes involving money changing hands. That money is held in a trust held by a third party uh, so that it can be divested to the relevant parties when that condition is met. Is that correct? Something like that? I'm a little behind on my tort law. That's correct. I'm a CPA. What can I say? He will not divide us. It is in tort law? I don't know what tort law is. I don't watch the British baking show. So true. It's like the lamest joke. He would, he who would pun would pick a pocket. Name that movie. Uh, we, they don't know I'm quoting Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World. We all know you're quoting Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World. You've referenced it like 10 times today.
Excuse me, you're dead? Terrible movie? What the fuck? Is bait? Bait used to be believable? Average movie? Yeah, maybe in 2003 when it came out. Ain't nothing average about it now. If it came out now, they'd call it fucking Master and Commander 2. Quantumania. I don't think I would like to be a member of her majesty's navy in 1804 at first you're like it's probably pretty cool you get to hang out with your boys you get to like you know drink grog and stuff like that i just don't think i could sleep in a hammock bro i think i'd be getting total shit sleep like the whole journey and it seems like the journey just never ends it ends whenever the captain says like you know nuts on the table we're done What if you got to meet Lord Nelson? I don't subscribe to the great man theory of history. So I think I'd be like, yo, that's Horatio Nelson. And then I'd be like, okay, what's for lunch? Oh, grog. Figures. Grog again. We skip these. <clears throat> Whatever, this game ain't worth the backseat. Thank Jesus be ballin'. You've achieved self-awareness. It's crazy, too, because... Well, you know what? I feel like just from what you just said, I know a lot about you. Because I always call you out as an eminent shit poster. I think you make some of the best shit posts in this chat. Isaac compelling you to backseat means in all likelihood, I'm going to guess that you found my channel as a, a younger individual from Isaac. You said, I love this game. I would love to watch it while I play it simultaneously. Um... I understand that's how many of you found your way to this particular corner of the earth. And then you probably were like really annoyed for a while, but then you're like, why is he not talking about the game? But then some inertia, you started to find yourself in, in almost a Stockholm Syndrome-esque way. You're like, wait a second, I'm kind of enjoying this guy's content in spite of himself. Um, and then this now, years later with me playing Isaac to this day has reawakened the inner child amongst yourself much like uh, the end of the movie Ratatouille when Christopher Lee's food critic is teleported back to his mama's Ratatouille the dish that was the very namesake of the movie a lot of people think it's named after the rat that's it's the pun there's a pun involved but it's not named after the rat Many people forget about that. Okay, slash marker me. We got one more. And we are zooming today, man. Many people are saying this. Many, many, many people are saying this. You know Remy's last name? That was the greatest relax pill of all time. The, the bro is a rat. He doesn't have a last name. No, you're right. If they made Ratatouille now, they would... At the end of the movie, would be like, Remy! He'd, he'd meet his mom at the end of Ratatouille 2. I never told you your last name, Remy. The mom would be like, I'm going to say Annette Benning, You know, a famous Hollywood actress, distinguished, doing some work that's definitely beneath her. And then um, she'd be like, I never told you your last name, Remy. Your name is Remy McQueen. 
and and then you would see like on TV, it would zoom in on the TV behind her with Lightning McQueen around corner number 17, about to take the Piston Cup. I believe I have my stapler. Yes, that's right. Cars and Ratatouille take place in the same universe, Earth. You know what's crazy, by the way? Because I've talked a lot about how the health department is not based. You guys all love Ratatouille. You all think it's like a fucking greatest movie of all time. How many of you would go nuts on the table and actually eat at Gusto's restaurant when the rat is cooking? None of you. Because when there's rats in the kitchen, your ass is like, I'm not going to eat there. I'm going to get poisoned. I don't mind eating there as long as the food's good. Doesn't bother me at all. I would only eat there if the rats were cooking. I know, well, for sure that shit is expensive. It might as well get something out of it. Hang on, I don't want to die. Still got it. <laughs> it's a movie. Wrong. Ratatouille, a film. Armageddon, movie. Pixar is weird in that they have some movies that are films and some movies that are movies. Good Dinosaur, that's a movie. Toy Story 2, that's a film. Is Frozen Kino? It's not, but it's, it's underrated by this particular demographic. Frozen is, is not Kino, but it is overhated. Do they have any Kino? I think Wally's kind of Kino. Go, 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 watch this, watch this. I'm a genius. Genius, bro! Did you see that? <laughs> oh man! Why are you asking me about a 2024 BMW X5, Chibli? I didn't buy it. I leased it. Okay. Buying cars only makes sense if you're buying a Lamborghini, so that you can. Take 50% depreciation on it right away. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of TikToks lately. I think it's tax fraud. Something like that. I told a great joke. My wife didn't seem to think it was that funny. We were driving to uh, the Korean grocery store. And on the highway, we got passed by like a 1994 Toyota Corolla. And it was the loudest car I'd ever heard in my entire life. And she said, what's wrong with that car? And I said, you know Japan. They're famous for making unreliable automobiles. She gave me a courtesy chuckle. She did, it did not get the reaction that I thought it would get. <laughs> Okay, okay. This is where someone explains my own joke to me. Actually, Japan is famous for making reliable automobiles. Yes. Yes, this baked into the premise of the joke. You are correct, sir. Watch this. Chibli can never... Yeah, she just thought I was being racist. <laughs> what do you say fuck me for? At least Chibli's got a denim jacket. Jean jackets kind of... So they were big when I was a kid. Like, really young. Um, and then they were not in vogue for a while. But then they became... 
in vogue again for like a year and a half. Are they already gone? I need to try. They're already gone. Fashion is cyclic? Yeah, but like the ramen noodle haircut for men has been around for like five, six years now. Jean jackets came and went in a season and a half. Like it's, it just, I guess different things move at different speeds, but still. I can't even, when librarian leaves a long message, sometimes you're best not to reply. <laughs> I, I didn't see it. That's a roll in my, oh, come on. Wait, they, they do splash damage on every bounce? I didn't know that, maybe this is goaded. No one does ramen hair anymore? You need to, um, I don't know where you live, but it sounds like you live in Ohio. This is a great big world out there. There's a lot of ramen broccoli haircuts out there. What's interesting is, it's, so it's very popular with uh, young men. If you see a young man by himself, he will not have the ramen hair. But if you see a group of young men, I would say between the ages of 13 and 21, they will all have the broccoli hair, which indicates to me, and this is the insidious part, it's a self-propagating haircut. Like, it's, it's a mimetic haircut that gets uh, transferred from, like, a host to, to another host. And I think that might be the first haircut of that kind. It Briefly, the only other time I've ever studied this in my career, and it actually was even more insidious because it happened over the airwaves, was when Jennifer Aniston was the first uh, patient zero, the noted case of uh, the Rachel haircut. And that, even my mom got that one, but she got better. That one was crazy because it was the first uh, transmission in history that didn't require contact between a host and a target. It actually was able to, to do its dirty work over the television airwaves. The Caesar from Clooney was also big. That's true. I mean, the, the joke doesn't really have legs, but... I thought we were talking about JT ramen. Well, Justin Timberlake, it's a different kind. It's ramen for sure, but it's more in the same vein as almost... I would call it like a, a mid-length Chad Kroger type ramen haircut. I'm talking more about the, the shaved sides and the broccoli on top. That's frosted tips? No, no, you got it confused. Justin Timberlake, he, you can't have frosted tips when you have curly hair. He had, I'll admit, he had like a, a prototype Maruchan ramen haircut. He, he might be patient zero, but he, he, it was within containment back then. Somehow TikTok has allowed it to breach. I need to do more damage, because I only have 25 minutes. Alright, well, I guess I'll just go fuck myself, actually. He got that Romanesco fade. <laughs> I'll plus two you for that one. Sometime the ramen noodle... Is, I don't know why I said sometime. <laughs> I've undermined my point. Sometimes the ramen noodle haircut looks good. I'm not saying it looks bad. I'm just saying it is, uh, it's everywhere. That was the original genesis of the, of the conversation. And it makes me hungry. I have that haircut. Probably... I'm going to say 5% of chat has a haircut. It's the, I, I can only believe now, I'm not like in high school, 
but I have to believe that it's the most popular haircut amongst high school boys. Nope, I'm bald. No disrespect, but when you reach baldness age, you should know not everything's about you, okay? I'm talking about I'm talking about the youth of the nation, like POD. A lot of my students have that haircut. Thank you for backing me up. Mullets? No, you got young people confused with Jean de Carouge from Ridley Scott's The Last Duel. Now, it's a, I, you're based for making the error, but it's erroneous nonetheless. What? Holy cow, someone mentioned Kitsilano in here. We got a real Vancouver head. And they didn't even say Kitsilano, they said Kits. That's how you know they're living in East Van. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, man. You got me with the East Van, too? I know, because East Van... I mean, what are you doing calling somebody from Kits, like, using the shorthand as if they were the hipster, bro? You ever walk down Commercial Drive? Shit is mullet central. And not just the men, but the women and children, too. As Hayden Christensen, noted Vancouver native, would say. One of these days, man. You ever seen him? No. <laughs> I don't think... The only famous person I've ever seen in Vancouver is Dan Bayar. Dan Bejar? Dan Behar? Destroyer. And even then, I didn't know 100% that it was him until he had already passed me by. I was walking on the, uh, on the seawall. I saw a very cool-looking middle-aged man who looked like Destroyer walk by me. And I said, huh, that guy looks familiar. And then, like, I did the, the meme where... Um, you know, the one where the distracted boyfriend, is that it? Where he's walking away and he looks back. I did the meme. I saw Cole Sprouse in a Mount Pleasant sandwich shop in 2019. Okay, but here's the important question. What's the, uh, which sandwich shop? I'm trying to think, Mount Pleasant. I mean, you, you wouldn't... Insult yourself by calling Rosemary Rock Salt a sandwich shop. And I don't think you're seeing Cole Sprouse at a, uh, at a subway. I gotta know. It's called Cafe Tika. It's not a chain. All right, I don't know it. You got me there. You Vancouver hipstered me. I didn't think it would be a chain, by the way. I just thought possibly I would heard I would have heard of it. You know, I've I've spent some time in Mount Pleasant. And I do mean on vacation. It's a nice neighborhood. Cole Sprouse fought my dad. Hey, this is a good time for me to admit, I don't know who Cole Sprouse is. Is he on one of those like CW shows? <laughs> I've heard his name before. He's like a, a young adult actor, right? He's from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. He's Dylan Sprouse's brother? I don't know who Dylan Sprouse is either, bro. I don't know shit about the Sprouse clan. He's also on Riverdale. Oh, like Charles Melton? Exactly like Charles Melton. Okay. <laughs> you know him from Big Daddy? He's the kid from Big Daddy? And he's on Riverdale? Wouldn't he? He's like my age then. Who the hell did he play? Principal Weatherby? <laughs> I can't believe I remember Archie's principal's name, man. Thank you, Brain. 
That was like the perfect way to finish that one off. Oh, man. Almost there. What's this shit do again? What is this? What does this do, man? Ruins your life? Here we go. Is this like an Isaac mod? It's just what the damn game looks like now. It's a crazy world out there. One time Justin Chatwin tossed a firecracker at my brother when we were kids in Nanaimo. Now, finally we're dealing with an A-lister. Justin Chatwin, of course, most famous for Dragon Ball Evolution, where he played Goku, by the way. He wasn't a bit part in that movie. I'm just glad we're finally dealing with, like, some household names. That's a deep pull. It's literally all I know him from, to be honest with you. <laughs> I once ran into Greg Proops. I don't really think I've met anybody famous. Um, there was like, uh, well, I went to school with Michael A.L. Fox, but uh, at Champions of Fire 1, there was a, a meet and greet arranged for us. And Amazon staff that are watching this, I don't blame you, okay? It was a zero interest rate environment. You know, but it, it just didn't seem like a fit to me that after the event, we went to like a, um, the, the club in Caesar's Palace and there was a meet and greet with Chuck the Iceman Liddell. Like I had just gotten through two days of playing Amazon Kindle Fire games for money. <laughs> but like we showed up too late to meet Chuck the Iceman Liddell, which honestly seemed fine because I don't watch the UFC, so I really would have just been like taking a picture just to be like, hey, this is a guy someone told me is famous. Like, it's better for him to have his time for himself than wasted with me, who's... It's not like I'm not a fan because I don't like him, I just don't know who he is. And that's like, I don't know. I guess at Champions of Fire 2, I didn't realize that DJ Rehab is actually like a pretty famous DJ. So I met him and spent some time on the couch with him and shook his hand and stuff like that. But it was only like years later that I discovered that he's actually like famous. Other than that, get yeah, Dan, man. Dan is pretty famous in certain circles. Yes, DJ Rehab, R R three H A B. We should check. Anyway, I I I don't I have never met that many famous people, honestly. And I'm out and about, which means they must not be out and about. I guess when they come to Vancouver, they're, they're hiding. <laughs> or we're not running in the same circles. Crazy, I never ran into, like, Logan Paul picking my kid up from Jimboree. Didn't you run into a hockey player? I've, I, I mean, it depends what you mean by famous, right? Like... One time, Kate and I had just seen a movie downtown, and we were walking, and I, there was uh, former Canucks defenseman Ben Hutton. I can't remember. He was with another Canucks player, but I don't remember who it was. I think that's it, man. Otherwise, the most... I don't count this, because it's, it's getting high on your own supply. The most famous people I've ever met are like other streamers and YouTubers. 
but like I'm also in the business, so I almost don't count it, right? That would be like, well, maybe this is getting high on my own supply. So I think it would be like asking Meryl Streep, like who the most famous person she'd ever met is. <laughs> She'd be like, you know, I'm like uh, an actress. She'd be like, I've done movies with Dustin Hoffman, bro. Has she met you? No, because I've never met her. We've never met, I've never met anybody that famous. But I also, I, this is not just me putting on airs. I know it might be hard to believe. I actually think like just seeing a famous person, I wouldn't walk up to them and say like I recognize them. It would have to be someone that like, I don't know, whose work like I, I really, really, really identify with. Like, I've been talking up Matt Damon. If I was at a subway and Matt Damon was in front of me, I don't think I would say, hey, hey, Matt Damon, I love your work. I think I would just let Matt Damon, I would give him the gift of, of solitude. What am I going to say to Matt Damon? Hey, you're Matt Damon? He's going to be like, you're right. I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> I'm going to be like, I enjoyed the movies you act in. And he's going to be like, that's why we make them. I'm sure the bro's just trying to, he's probably doing the same thing that I'm doing, rehearsing the order in my head so that I get the ingredients right when I get up to the front. Hi, can I have a foot long Italian herbs and cheese uh, oven roasted chicken breast, please? Yes, cheese and toasted. Like, are you just repeating that over and over in my head? Me, when the call of the void hits its subway. Hi, can I have a foot long cock? I mean, oh fuck, a foot long penis. Um, can I have a foot of <laughs> dick in? <laughs> um, 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 I mean, can I have a cheese and toasted penis? Uh, can I get toasted peanut butter and jelly? Uh, oh man. With a little bit of poop on top. <clears throat> Two of hearts. What are we doing here, man? What are, what, are, what are we doing here? Is this allowed? Hey, is this allowed? Stop. Why can you imagine Matt Damon at Subway, but not Cole Sprouse? Because Matt Damon is 46 years old. Also, I feel like, well, I guess Matt Damon's from Boston, right? That's the other reason. <laughs> and he's wicked smart. I'm try it feels crazy to me that I've never seen any more famous people than that. Or like come in contact with more famous people than that. Come on, bro. Come on. You just go to Costco? Brother, I'm out of the house like all the time. Now, my ass is not fucking... I don't know where the celebrities in Vancouver go. They probably go to the craft services. And then when the shoot is done, they probably go back to their hotel. If I had to guess, but... We out here. They're in your neighborhood? I don't think so. Although I will say, I have a, a friend who used, and this we're going several layers deep here. I have a friend who lived in an apartment building where one of his neighbors rented, like their side hustle was that they rented, we're so lucky. Hang on, we're, we're 20 layers deep here. Their side hustle was they rented their apartment to actors and actresses who were in Vancouver for like long shoots. So apparently, and this is hearsay, they said that in like 2003, 
Halle Berry stayed in their apartment for like, I don't know, like two months while they were shooting Catwoman here. So apparently it does happen, but... <laughs> but I ain't ever seen it. Yeah, they signed her basketball. <laughs> Must be a nice apartment. You know what the crazy thing was? Not really. Like, it was not a bad apartment, but it's not the kind of apartment you would expect, you know, like a Hollywood celebrity to be, like, living in. But, I mean, they're only there for two months. It's nicer than a hotel room, for sure. My neighbor is Brad Pitt's contractor, but I live in L.A., so it's more like I'm saying I know a guy. <laughs> okay, I see you. I just... It is cool, though. I mean, you can run the numbers, right? Like, I mean, obviously it's clumped geographically to, to big cities, I'm sure. But how many famous people are there worldwide? Like, from a, from a Western context, because obviously, like, I could have passed by celebrities, like, every day in South Korea, and I wouldn't have known. There must be, like, 50,000. And maybe any given person might recognize 2,500. And then how many... I can't do this math anymore. I've gotten too far. <laughs> I've gotten too many digits. You wouldn't recognize... You would recognize 50 famous... I'm basically asking, can you name 50 people you've never met? If the answer is no, I, I don't believe you. <laughs> you can't? Come on. You're watching. You, you got me already. And then I stream with like... 12 other people. Now we're talking. So you're already getting there. I've never met you? That's what I'm saying. But if you saw me, you would be like, I know who that is. I'm not saying you've met 2,500 famous people. Are you insane? Who are you? Brad Pitt's contractor's neighbor? 12 then? I'm the only person you know that you don't know that you've never met. That's, that doesn't make sense. You wouldn't recognize Joe Biden if you saw him. You wouldn't recognize um, Cole Sprouse. It's you and Smosh. That's fucking sad. You gotta look at the liner jackets of your books, man. It's just me and Smosh? This shit is gonna, you're bumming me the fuck out, dude. <laughs> I'm flattered that you recognize me and Smosh, but like you gotta broaden your horizons a little bit on top of that. That's such a good comeback, me and Smosh, man. You know what's crazy? There's some there's some real heads out there. I got recognized like during Everybody masked up era of COVID. That's crazy. I remember in my head being like, how the fuck did you recognize me? I had like a, a toque on and a mask. Dude was like, hey, are you NL? Damn, bro, keep it down. I'm at Savon. I wasn't actually upset. I was impressed more than anything else. I should not be doing this. You know what? It might have been the toe walking. That's fair. Soul of Isaac. Okay, okay, we'll talk. I mean, I got, I got four minutes. Loud complaints of electrical interference. 
You would be so stunned by how normal I am in public except for the toe walking. I'm making small talk with the, the cashier, other people in line if, if they start it. That's not normal. It is normal. It's just not normal on this website. And I understand you come by it honestly. No disrespect intended. I do slide with my socks on, but the people like in public don't have to know that because I got shoes on. Stop holding everyone up in line, Grandpa. No, I, uh, I'm, I would say I am in the top 25th percentile, the top quartile of speed demons. And that's whether I'm paying at a, an, a checkout that is manned by a cashier, or personed by a cashier, I should say, or the self-checkout, no matter who it's personed by, usually me. I'm not the fastest. I would, I, even in my age group, I'm faster than the average 35 year old. I'll tell you that much. You know how I know that? Because I need to use my, my fingerprints to open the wallet on my phone to pay for something at a card reader. I open it and then it has a 30 second countdown and I then start scanning this stuff so that I can instantly do the tap. So I'm sub 30 seconds most of the time. Now, what if you got more than five items? Then I'm not going to the self-checkout most of the time. Like you will, if anybody, I'm just gonna tell you, I'm gonna use a pejorative. I think you are stupid if you use the self-checkout at Costco. At a normal grocery store, you're almost stupid if you don't because you are gonna be faster than the cashier and who cares, you know? It's their job to scan the stuff. It's not to, you know, break a new world record in scanning speed. They got other stuff on their minds. At Costco, they are faster than you. They, those are artisan scanners. That's what they do all day. It's an art. They study it. And they're, they scan them faster than you could possibly scan them. Unless you also worked at Costco. The only reason you would use the self-checkout at Costco is to steal things. <laughs> He's exactly right. Scanning your PlayStation 5 as uh, 4011. Okay, one moment. I'm just going to tell Bear Taffy I will be two minutes late. Hello. I'm on the... Cathedral, I will be three mins max. Prage. I am in traffic. It did, bro, this is as traffic as anything else. It's the same principle. If I didn't want to be late, I shouldn't have started an Isaac run, you know, at this time. I should have started my Isaac run, you know, 40 minutes early instead of 25 minutes early. But if conditions were perfect, I would have been on time. Do you line up the barcodes for the cashier? God is my witness. I never thought to do that. That's a great idea. But then sometimes at Costco, I'm not making an excuse for my behavior. You got me, kid. It looks like I won't be three minutes. <laughs> At Costco, they're usually actually like mad at me for putting my shit on the belt. On the belt, I'm trying to put all the stuff. And then the assistant, I don't know how the hierarchy works, but there's one person at the cash register and one person handling logistics. The logistics manager is always like, what are you doing? Like, stop putting your shit on the belt. We got this, bro. You pay 60 bucks a year for a membership. Just give us the card. Okay, slash marker. That's Isaac... Four. 